What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, you guys know me. I love creating stuff on my 3D printers. Now, I started off with an Ender 3 Pro, but as soon as I got my Bamboo Lab printers, things completely changed when it came to 3D printing. And that's because Bamboo Lab kind of disrupted the entire market, making really accessible, affordable, and easy to use 3D printers. Now, the folks over at Xtool are trying to do that exact same thing, but with lasers. Xtool actually hooked me up with their S1 laser cutter and it's opening up an entire new realm of creativity. Now, when I first thought of laser cutting, pretty much I was just thinking about little wood crafts and things like that, but no, this thing can do so much more. And the more I play with it, the more I'm like, well, maybe I can do this or maybe I can do that. And again, it's opened up a world of creativity for me. All right, so that's enough intro for me. Let's actually get into it and see what we can do with it. Let's go. So the folks over at X-Tool really are trying to follow the Bamboo Lab model. They're making a very high quality machine at an extremely competitive price that's super easy to use. Now I'm not really going to do an unboxing of this laser because honestly there's a ton of great videos on YouTube already and I've got some other stuff I want to show you. Now I will tell you that the unboxing and setup of this laser has been extremely simple so just follow along with the guide if you have any questions go to YouTube. But literally couldn't be easier now for things like lasers or 3d printers it doesn't really always just matter how good the physical machine is it's also the software that you use to create with it so xtool uses their own app called creative space and that's really what you make all of your designs in now it is also compatible with lightburn which is another 3d engraving software however that requires licenses and money and honestly the xtool creative space app itself has been really good and i've been having a ton of fun with it what's really cool about the xtool s1 is that the laser module itself is actually modular so you can get it with a 10 20 or 40 watt diode laser i personally got the 20 watt which has a little bit better focus than the 40 watt so the 20 watts a little bit better for engraving really good detail and the 40 watts better for cutting stuff you can also get a 2 watt ir laser which is good for engraving things like plastic the fact that it runs off of a modular laser means that you can actually buy it for one thing realize you want to do something else and just get a different diode for it. It's super cool. So once I got the laser all set up, I hopped into the Creative Space app and started taking a look around. Inside the software, they actually have a whole list of project files that other users have created or Xtool has created, and you can just scroll through that and find something that inspires you. Furthermore, you can actually just hop into a canvas and use their AI tool called ArtMine to create some entirely unique things. So of course, one of the first things I did is I just grabbed one of their preset things and gave it a rip, see what it looks like. And yeah, it's just a berry in an ice cream, and that was one of their stock things, but for the first time using this laser, it was super, super easy. So after that, I'm like, okay, let's see what I can do. So I enter into the AI. AI, Sasquatch hacking computer, and then I came up with this guy. It was super, super easy to do. Literally couldn't be easier. Figured out how to get it to cut out around it. And yeah, this is my AI generated image. Nobody's got this. Nobody's done this before. This is just for me. So then I started thinking a little bit outside of the box because obviously black and white, you know, one bit kind of designs, they're all over the place when it comes to laser cutters. So I started looking deeper and found out that you can actually make really, really cool 3D looking stuff like this. Now this thing is absolutely gorgeous. If we look at it closer here, like that is fully 3D. That's actually cut into the wood. I had absolutely no clue that you could do this with a laser cutter. Absolutely gorgeous. It took about 45 minutes, but this thing is again above and beyond anything I had any idea you could do with a laser cutter. So that's the thing about a really well designed creator tool. It just opens up all of this creativity and all these options. And as soon as you start playing with it, you just want to keep doing more and more and more. And that's what I did. So Amelia had asked if I can make a Sailor Moon keychain. And I mean, one of the great things about it is you can design in Photoshop, which I'm proficient in. So I just found an image of Sailor Moon, throw a little key ring on it, and I made a keychain. This thing came out so good. The detail and just everything came out great. But then I'm thinking, everybody prints stuff like this, then there's always the boring side. Why do we need the boring side? So I thought to myself, if I can engrave like the design onto it and then cut keyholes in it so that when I flip it over, I know where to locate the laser, I can actually make something that I can print on both sides and then cut out when it's done. Now this process ended up being so much easier than I thought. All I had to do is go into Photoshop, flip over my image and put little registration lines in the top corner. So I knew when I mirrored it, all I had to do is flip the wood over and as long as I line the laser up with my registration lines, it would be perfect. And sure enough, 
First try, I got it to work. I was looking through Etsy and I don't think I found a single person that was printing dual sided on something that was a custom shape. It was absolutely the easiest thing in the world. And again, I don't see anybody doing this. Like who wants this when you can have this? It's just that simple. So at this point, I'm hooked. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's make some more cool stuff. And also, I haven't quite built the window vent for this thing yet. There's a great hose that hooks up to the back of the laser, so you can vent it directly out the window. But I haven't made the window part for it yet. So it's starting to smell a little smoky. So I'm like, all right, let's move on to some other materials. And that's when I met stainless steel. Now, keep in mind, this is a 20 watt diode laser. It's basically can make some cool surface effects on stainless steel, but unlike a fiber laser, it's not going to cut super deep into it. Now, does this mean we can't have fun with stainless steel? Absolutely not, because we can still do some really cool stuff. Introducing really cool stuff. Now, it's a little bit hard to show on camera because it actually has kind of a color that it refracts. If we get it at the right angle here, there we go. You see that? Because it anneals the steel, it actually makes things colored. So this is actually the first thing that I tried printing. Obviously, we have some the uh, the non being centered. That was a mistake I made. It's really easy to center stuff with this laser. But yeah, if we take a look at this thing, we can see we actually have a little bit of brown color and some blueing on there. So that got my creative juices really going. So these were just free little kind of medallions or whatever you want to call them that came with the laser engraver. And I'm so glad they came with these because it allowed me to play with them. And the level of detail is amazing. These things are small. I think this is about 30 millimeters. They're very, very small, but I was able to print this stuff so well on here or engrave, I guess it's calling. It's really hard for me to stop saying print because again, I'm a 3D print guy, but yeah, this is just absolutely amazing. It's so cool looking. And again, the detail is so good. So then I went ahead and actually ordered these two inch stainless steel kind of coin pendants. And yeah, I made this guy too. So it's got talking Sasquatch 2024 it says, don't be a skid again. It's you need a little bit of refraction to see it, but like, man, these things are so cool. I'm so proud of these. And actually, here's another fun thing that actually didn't work out exactly as I wanted it to, but it was still fun to play with. I picked up these stainless steel credit cards. This is about 0.5 millimeter thick uh, stainless steel, and it was a little thin, so it warped, but as a proof of concept, I think they came out really cool. Now, a while ago, I had designed kind of a credit card because we were doing NFC stuff, hence the NFC symbol. But I designed this and decided to print it on this stainless steel credit card or a business card. It came out so good. I just need to make it not warp. I think I can play around with the speeds or just get thicker steel. But yeah, the annealing process made this thing look so, so good. Some of you may remember that we were doing coasters a while ago, so I decided to try my own because it came with a coaster to play with. And this is what I came out with. It's actually not bad. I need to adjust the levels a little bit and they could go faster because the gradient you can see kind of works. And I think if I run the laser a little bit lower power, a little bit faster, it'll look even better. But again, this was my first try and it came out that well. Now I have a little bit of a reputation for 3D printing and you know, I spent a lot of time learning how to use the slicer. And these are the maker chips I took to DEF CON. I printed hundreds of these things. But what's cool about this is like, again, I printed these after a day of owning this laser cutter, it took me months and months and months of learning to be able to do something like this. And every time I found a new material to play with, I just kept getting more and more ideas. I picked a bunch of these uh, aluminum anodized or painted or whatever dog tags. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, I can make cool stuff with these. And as soon as I had a purple tag, we had to make an AWOC dynamic dog tag. Look at how good that came out. It's got AWOC's logo. And then on the back here, we've got his very small detailed little every single line of this came out so good. I'm absolutely floored at how nice these things are. Later in the week, Sasquatch here, I actually made a bunch more designs I wanted to show off. So this is some AI generated hacking Sasquatch images. I thought those came out really good. I actually did uh, Post Malone as well. So here's a little little Post Malone action going on there. And then I made my own tag. So here's the talking Sasquatch tag. If we flip it over, it's got don't be a skid and a DeLorean with a scannable QR code. These all came out so good. I had so much fun playing with this. One of the other things I love about lasers is that unlike a 3D printer, especially the bamboo, there's not like an eight minute setup or self calibration before it. So I'm banging stuff out quick. I just got the new Marauder logo from Just Call Me Coco and I've been struggling to figure out what I wanted to do with it. So I ended up making him this dog tag, which I think came out absolutely. <laughs> 
sick. What's cool too is that I was actually able to try a bunch of different things. Like I ended up not liking this, but I try to like change the little blood splatter in the back and I pixelize it. I thought this would look really cool. Eh, it's okay. It doesn't really have the, 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 the pop that I wanted to have. But again, I was able to knock this out in like 10 minutes, which is super cool. So yeah, long story short, I never thought I needed a laser cutter or engraver because I mean, all the stuff that I saw was basically just like wood cutting things. It was not that inspiring. But I tell you, as soon as you get something like this and it's this easy, you will find reasons to use it. You'll get more and more like comfortable using it, figuring out the software. And again, at that point in time, you can just be as creative as you want. Now, I'm definitely going to be creating a store and marketing a lot of cool stuff with this laser. So keep an eye out for that as well. And now that I've opened the laser rabbit hole, now I'm going to scratch my head looking at fiber lasers to do deep engraving on coins and things because that stuff's really cool too. And X-Tool's got you covered no matter what you want to do. They have refurbished lasers starting at like $2.99 all the way up to really high-end, really nice fiber lasers. They've even got their M1 Ultra, which is a diode 10-watt laser and a blade cutter. They even have really cool accessories, like I've got a screen printing setup, so you use the laser to cut the screens, and then yeah, screen printing. They've even got a heat press that you can use for sublimation. I mean, again, they cover all the bases. What's also cool is that they sell their own materials, and you can select those materials inside the laser cutting software itself, so it's gonna have all your settings and stuff done for you. It literally couldn't be easier. So if you've been thinking at all about getting a laser, the X-Tool series of lasers, they're absolutely phenomenal. The quality's there, the price is great. So if you wanna grab one, follow the link down below in the description and help support the channel. Now, full discretion, X-Tool did send me this laser, but they're not paying me. And this is my honest feedback on it. It has been an absolute joy playing with this machine. In fact, as soon as I'm done filming, I'm gonna throw another one of these dog tags down because I've got another pattern I wanna try. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. You guys are absolute legends and we'll catch you next time.